when we Masaku is one of the stars of the new limited series we own this city um, playing Nicole Steele who is an attorney investigating corruption within the Baltimore Police Department's gun trace task force I'm Kevin Jacobson of Gold Derby um, and I just want to start with just getting the chance to work with David Simon you know this legendary TV writer you know the wire Treme, show me a hero, the, all these things. And also George Pelicanos, who's his frequent collaborator. I mean, can you describe just working on one of their shows and just the familiarity you had with that team before this? Um, working with those guys is, it, it's really easy actually, because they have this really um, unique, relationship with their crew and cast and the city and so and the people of the city and so um their main goal is to like represent the city represent the people represent the truth and also um i guess to make it enjoyable and make everyone feel like part of the family so it was really actually a really easy, um, easy transition into the, the family because that's what they hold most dear is people enjoying working with them and wanting to come back. And yeah, a lot of respect and a lot of, you know, good energy and encouragement about, you know, what we're doing and what and why we're doing it. Yeah. And there is there's this definitely authenticity to all, pretty much all of his shows. And but from what I understand, though, Nicole Steele isn't in the book, We Own This City, which is what this is based on, which is this nonfiction book. But, you know, she's a fiction, kind of like a com composite character, I guess you could say, of the people who were investigating this police department. But I'm curious if you felt compelled at all to read the book anyway, just to sort of wrap your mind around the story and just all the moving parts, or if you just wanted to work off the scripts. I definitely wanted to get as much information about what happened, the truth of what happened. And, and that was absolutely my focus. I didn't get to finish the book before I started because um, I was working on another thing and came straight onto this. So um, I was doing just, I was just doing a lot of research and um, yeah. So that's basically how, I mean, I didn't get to finish it before I started, but I, de I started it. <laughs> right. But it was, you know, I I did, you know, I, I felt like I needed the information from the book, you know, I needed the, like, what happened and how things happened. But, um yeah, because my character isn't a real character, you know, I actually really appreciated how you know, she kind of feels like the audience member within the, the melee of what's going on like she asked the same questions I was asking when I was reading the script the the feelings that were being drummed up in me were the same feelings that were being drummed up in her and but you know she obviously had the responsibility of getting this consent decree so um yeah I, I like that freedom of being just kind of someone coming in and trying to figure out how this happened why this happened and how do we get it to stop happening and never happen again um yeah it, it i i i don't envy anyone who has to play someone who is real who was real who is living um because there's a responsibility and then there's an expectation and then there's you know pressure more pressure i mean there's pressure because it's a real life story and then to know that you're playing someone who can watch your performance, you know, it's, that's a lot of, that's a lot of pressure. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious, actually, what were the sort of key elements of Nicole that you felt like you understood just about her background and just how she got to this position and how she carries herself? Like, do you find it helpful to kind of just map out a life for your characters? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think it's really important to um, know where your characters come from because you're meeting that, like you know, we're all a product of everyone we've ever met, every experience we've ever had. And so, if we were to write a play or a TV show 
of our life from this moment onwards, all those things would impact how this character behaves, how they feel, what they what they do, how they respond to things. So like knowing about her history, her family upbringing, you know, being raised in Bethesda in a very, you know, not multicultural um, area, her dad being a judge, you know, knowing how she got to where, and then, you know, her career path up until she joined the the civil rights office. Um, you know, I, I think that's already important because that's just that's just character. It's someone who's not afraid to pivot. It's someone who's not afraid to say, I think I'm on the wrong side and do something about it. It's someone who has been raised with a, you know, a certain amount of privilege. Um, you know, father is a judge, you know, not they, you know, have a, a, a relatively wealthy, you know, all those things impact who she is and how she responds. Um, I really, I really love that about her. She's not afraid to pivot. She's not afraid of the truth and her, and, and her morality being questioned and, um, and, 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 and making the right decision for her, you know? Yeah, definitely. I think actually, one of the more telling lines from her in the first episode is when she's telling another character that where he seems kind of angry about the brutality that's happening she says that she's angry too but she doesn't make it her everything right. um can yeah. you talk about what she means by that i mean if you let anger be your everything i mean as as uh, you know a just uh, a just anger you still you don't leave room for your own joy and your own peace you know mm -hmm. I feel like it's 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 about survival um surviving in a world that is imbalanced and unkind and cruel and and all those things, if you, if, you know, sometimes, I mean, I don't know about you, but when I look at the news and I'm like, ha, the inhumanity of humanity, <laughs> it yeah, every day. Mm -hmm. blows my mind. Mm -hmm. But like without, if you make it your, if you focus on it, it's very hard to kind of see past and, and actually hope and dream for something better. Um, I think you need that um, that 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 distance in order to be productive and proactive, and also enjoy what you do have, all the good things that are around too. Um, yeah, I think, but it's hard. It's hard. I think that's a an act of um, that's like a constant act of not getting sucked down into the, the the darkness that we see around us and you know trying to keep it keep the hope alive that tomorrow might be a little bit better yeah um and well another thing that really struck me about this performance is just how much of it is her listening and just just taking in this information that another person is telling her and like she's really actively listening and really responding to what the other person is saying um and i'm wondering if there's maybe just a, a key there to reacting to a scene that you've found maybe even over the years when maybe you're not the most dominant person in the scene but the way that you're reacting is also very important too yeah, I mean, they say acting is reacting. <laughs> mm -hmm. And, you know, it is, it's, it's, it's really not an easy thing to do, like to just listen. Sometimes on, on in a scene that you, d you do numerous times, you know, different camera setups over however many hours. I remember my drama teacher, I played Nellie Dean in, um, in Wuthering Heights, and who's the narrator who has to basically see everything. And he'd be like, you're not listening, you're not listening. I said, I am listening, I am listening. I heard every word of the scene. And he'd be like, well, look like you're listening. Mm. <laughs> and it's, there's, there is a, there is a, there is like a little bit of, um, 
I don't know, like uh, there is a the, not, I don't want to say technique because that sounds like bigger than it is, but there is something of letting the audience know that things are that things are hitting and 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 hitting you and and there are feelings happening and you know you have to make sure that your listening doesn't look completely passive so it's it's not it doesn't feel too um it doesn't feel too uh passive in a way it feels you like you have to i have to show you what it this per what this person's um what this person saying meet what that means to me too i have to show the audience that too so there is still a little bit of um yeah like i don't know technique to that <laughs> it's funny i i do i will always remember that It'll look like you're listening i was like Oh, I guess there's a there's a thing that I need I need to do to make sure that they the audience sees that I'm listening. <laughs> right. It's using a lot of different senses there. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm actually also wondering about working in Baltimore, you know, itself as a setting, which has such a strong sense of place. Um, I mean, did you have any sort of observations while you were shooting there that just stuck out to you in terms of just the environment? I mean, it's such a beautiful city um the architecture is so quaint and like it feels like uh, it feels like an old city with like charm and texture and you know it feels so american in a way like it, just, it feels so like how i imagine you know i was re i read um uh yeah jesse's um home go homecoming uh homegoing and there's a there's a chapter in baltimore and i felt like it was still the same streets like you can see the like it's set in i don't know this this chapter is maybe in the 1800s maybe early 1900s maybe i can't i'm not sh entirely sure about timing but it felt like oh i can i can see that character walking down these streets like i still it still has the 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 history through through the architecture it's so beautiful it's so beautiful and then the the people are so kind and warm like i don't i don't know i feel like there's just there's like an openness and someone described um, baltimore as tough and kind and i'm like i feel like that's a perfect um description of the city the people of the city is tough but it's so kind as well i like i've never been invited to dinner so many times by almost strangers you know people just like even just like your neighbors in the same like living in the same block like you should come over for dinner i'm like wow people are so open um but i think it's tough because of lots of reasons but things like this that things like this happening in in a city where now there is no trust between the police and the and the public there's no you know there's that makes you tough like that kind of when you feel what i feel what i think is remarkable about the people is that there is this feeling of like when there is this feeling of like th this presence that have that has kind of torn through like the police and the, the system has torn through and it feels it's just oppressive but the kindness is that kind of i don't know the bounce from it like they're not it's not it's there but it's it's not their everything the anger is there but it's not their everything yeah right yeah. well i guess maybe even speaking to that too this is very challenging material i would say not only just the storytelling is very complex but you know, based on this real thing that happened and dealing with real corruption and police brutality, and there's like a human cost to it. And I'm just curious how you were able to, I guess, let go of it in a way at the end of the day and try to sort of find some sense of joy because this is such a heavy story. Yeah, I mean, it's the, this is a question for every single job, like letting anything go, um, but especially something like this, because you, you know, I can't help but feel more more nervous in front of a, the, a 
a police officer in, in Baltimore, I feel kind of more stressed because of the 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 um, work we're doing and, you know, in it not being in the far past, it being like just a minute ago. Um, you know, there for me, the only the thing that I always do when things are heavy and in my work life is just to connect fully to my my home life. I, I, I talk to the people who 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 ground me and yeah, and that's an everyday thing after work. It's like my husband, my family, like my friends, like feel grounded and return return back to who I am. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, um, just as we wrap up here, I mean, you've been in the business for a little while at this point, but you're just, I feel like you're just starting to get this kind of major recognition for your work. And people are obviously recognizing you from Loki and you had a BAFTA nomination for his house and you also won a BAFTA back in the day and you were nominated for Lovecraft Country and Critics Choice Awards. Um, you know, here at Gold Derby, we could say that we also nominated you for your performance in that show for yeah. our own awards. Um, so I would just love to know what it's felt like to kind of, I don't know if you feel like this is a new era of your career, I guess, or just like getting this more mainstream recognition sort of worldwide and how different it feels. Um, yeah, I feel like the, the, it does feel quite, you know, the US was never a part of my plan. You know, it, it, it wasn't part of my plan. Obviously I'm open to working anywhere and everywhere, but it feels quite, um, this feels very different from what I had imagined for myself. Um, uh, and I'm grateful. I really, I really, I went to drama school thinking theater, you know, Shakespeare. And I didn't see this. I didn't see this in my future. And so I feel really like I'm, I'm enjoying the, I'm really enjoying the work, really grateful for it because I feel like it's, I feel like it's quite it's nourishing and um, the work that I've you know so like luckily been a part of especially over the last like five years with his house and you know I just you know Lovecraft Country um I just feel like wow I didn't even I didn't even know every time I read a script from his house or an episode of Lovecraft Country I was like I didn't know, I didn't know that our stories could be told like this. I didn't know people could feel like this. I didn't know, like I hadn't thought of, I just, I hadn't thought about genre. I hadn't thought about, I just, my mind was blown. Like for me, it just, genre was not a part of my world. Like I don't like scary films whatsoever. Um, you know, Loki, I, you know, I hadn't watched Mar a Marvel film I don't think ever until uh, Black Panther. And so Black Panther blew my mind. Like I was like, oh, I didn't think that, I didn't think that a comic book would be in Africa. <laughs> like I just didn't, I thought it was like, you know, Captain America and da, 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 which are all great, but it's just like, it just wasn't something that necessarily spoke to my heart. And so seeing that I was like, oh, I, wa I wanna be in Marvel. And thankfully, you know, you know, it, it happened. But um, yeah, these are all things. These these I just these creators. I just feel like they they take it take it, them these ideas and thoughts and just further further than I could have imagined. So this was just you know it was never part of the plan. But I never even envisaged stories like this. And with you know we own the city. I honestly thought I was I hoped it was a drama. You know it blew my mind that it was. And I couldn't believe that it was real, that it was true, that this actually happened. 2017, like I had just moved to the States 20, like at the end of uh, 2018. Like I, I just can't, couldn't believe it. It felt far-fetched, but it was, tr it's true. Um, yeah, so I can't, I, yeah, I, this is not what I imagined, but I'm so, so happy that this is where I'm at right now and who knows what tomorrow holds you know 
Yeah, yeah. Keep doing great work. Um, well, for those of you watching, subscribe for more interviews and go to goldderby.com to make your Emmy predictions. Um, truly, thank you so much, Wanmi, for thank talking you. with me. Thank you.